In this video, we're going to install the spindle on the headstock. D1 cam lock spindle, spindle cone pulley, the bull gear, sleeve bearings, large and small, cone pinion gear, two thrust bearings, again, one large and one small. They take the lateral load. Spindle gear, and finally the take-up nut. Here are all the parts to the headstock, really. It's got the spindle as well as the back gear parts. You can see the bronze bearing on the top left and the spindle on the bottom. This is the bull gear and the bull gear clamp assembly. First, we start with the plunger, then put in the clamp, then goes on the clamp gib held there by a couple of screws, coil spring goes next, a washer, and the carter pen. I'm not doing it here, I had to do it later, but make sure this carter pen is very compact and within the radius of this washer so it does not interfere with the pulley. The plunger operates the bull gear clamp in order to lock the bull gear to the cone pulley on the spindle in these recesses that are oriented 90 degrees on the inside of the cone pulley. Before we put the spindle together, I want to talk about a couple of parts. And one is the cam. There are three sets of these that are oriented on the end of the spindle. There's a cam and then there's a cam detent that holds the cam in place as it rotates. The detent is held against the cam by a spring and then a cap screw that puts pressure on the spring. So this detent just rotates in this cavity around the cam, keeping the cam in place. Each of the three cams in the spindle mate with three studs that are in the chuck. So as the chuck is placed onto the spindle, these studs go in and then the cams are turned to lock it in place. It's as simple as that. Turn the cam back and then you can remove the chuck. Again, the chuck studs go in, turn the cam to lock it, and then it locks the chuck in place. You turn the cam back and you can remove the chuck. Okay, now we put the cam into the spindle, slide the cam in, put the detent plunger in place. It'll find its own home down there. Slide in the spring, then put on the cap screw. Now don't tighten this cap screw very tight. All it does is put pressure on the spring. So I tighten it down till it bottoms out and then back it off a half a turn. This is one of the bronze sleeve bearings. They're both the same except for size. And you can see there is a expander at the top that has a dovetail fit to the bearing. This puts pressure up onto the bearing, which tends to spread it out at the top. Then at the same time, the bearing cap pushes down on the sleeve bearing, tending to push it down and, and compress the bearing. So both these forces together give a good, solid pressure on the bearing all around the spindle. Inside the bearing cap, there is a cavity that, that is able to accommodate the expander. And then there are a couple of cap screws that go into the top of the bearing cap that pull the expander up, spreading that bearing out slightly. So when you're adjusting the bearing or you're installing the bearing, you have to keep this in mind. 
The cap screws are made out of steel, but the female screws in the expander obviously are in bronze, so they're pretty fragile. Be careful. One more thing about the bearing. There is a hole in the bottom that accommodates a capillary oiler that sits on the headstock and draws oil out of a sump through the bearing and contacts with the spindle. Okay, oil up the spindle in preparation for sliding on the first sleeve bearing. This is the large sleeve bearing as is on the business end of this spindle. And then you slide on the bearing expander with an oil wick inside to help distribute the oil around the inside of this sleeve bearing. Work it on and then put some oil on the felt wick. Now you can press on the bull gear. I use some heat. Uh, to expand the bull gear a little bit, make sure it's tight up against the shoulder on the spindle. And don't forget the woodruff key. I pressed the bull gear on off camera, and here it is. Tight up against the shoulder. That shaft is still a little bit hot. Okay, now we're ready for the cone pulley on the spindle. And here we're looking down the shaft and you can see it's all greased up. There are two big bronze bearings on either end. This entire area will be pumped full of grease later. Slide the spindle shaft down through the cone pulley and try not to ding anything up. And a nice tight fit. This would be a good time to check and make sure the plunger works smoothly and the clamp engages with the spindle pulley. Now slide on the large thrust bearing. There are two. The big one goes on first. And it's made up of two races, as you can see here, and the ball bearings in the cage. Now slide on the small sleeve bearing with the expander. We are ready to set the spindle on the headstock, but before we do, we have to get these capillary oilers in place. And you do that by getting a couple of pieces of wire, insert them into the casting so that you can hold these oilers down into the oil sump, but then also contacting the spindle bearing through that bronze bushing. And here you can see, once you get the spindle in place, you pull the wire out, and this oiler will pop up and contact the spindle through the hole in the bottom of the sleeve bearing. Also notice the oiler tube is slightly raised above the casting. This will help you seat the bearing in the right spot, and it'll kind of clunk when you get the spindle in the right spot. Now I'll set the spindle in place and jostle it just a little bit and you can hear it seat. Clunk number one. And clunk number two. Now you can remove the wires and you can hear the uh, capillary boiler rise up and contact the spindle. The large thrust bearing should seat fleshly against the 
casting just in front of the small sleeve bearing. Now you can install the shims and the bearing caps. We are not going to go over the adjustments here. That'll be in a different video, but I do want to walk through how to put this cap on. First, you take these large cap screws and get them engaged with the threads and just tighten them by hand. Don't tighten up these big bolts until you locate the expander right in line with the access holes on the top of the cap. Here I'm just using an Allen wrench to push it over and you can see it line up perfectly and then get these little cap screws started. You got to get these little cap screws started in the expander before you tighten down the big cap screws on the green cap. Now you can tighten up the expanders and then install the pipe plugs at the very top of the bearing cap. Now be careful how you install these sleeve bearings and the bearing expanders. They're labeled. There's an F on the expander and the sleeve bearing that points towards the business end of the spindle. Here I am showing you the installation of the bearing cap on the large side, the right hand side, the procedures are exactly the same. Now we can install the small thrust bearing. It goes on just like the first and seats up against the casting. Another woodruff key and then the spindle gear which engages with the reversing lever assembly. The take-up nut is installed last and it takes out all the play and bearings. So screw it on and then there is a take-up nut screw that tightens the take-up nut onto the thread so it will not move. Install the pipe plugs in the front of the casting. The top one does not need a sealer tape, but the bottom one should have it. And then also the oiler should also have sealer tape. Now you can fill the headstock with oil through the oiler. It takes quite a bit, actually. You can remove the little grease screw and install a grease fitting so that you can fill the pulley full of grease. I got a little air in it so it came out. Reinstall the uh, grease fitting screw and then you're done. You know, the uh, pulley looks a little tarnished and slightly rusted here. I plan on cleaning that up after I get power to the pulley. 